I'm trying to make my way through all of her books. <laughs> no, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. If you are new here, my name is Megan and this is my booktube channel. And today we have got such an exciting video. We are doing a book haul. <laughs> Oh, I'm for that. I'm all for that. All right, girl. This is all the books that I have bought since about probably the start of February. So we've got 21 books to get through and we've got a really good mix of ages, of genres. And so what I thought we would do is we'll just kind of go like middle grade, YA, adult. And there's a few that fit into different categories, so we'll go through them. I've been waiting to this video for a long time. I just spoke so fast you probably can't understand a single thing I said. But every day I've been like, when am I gonna do the book haul? <laughs> oh wait, no, we actually have 22 books. We have 22 books. One more, how exciting. First, I thought we'll just quickly start with middle grade because I've got three here. I don't typically read that much middle grade. The only time I would read middle grade is if I'm like reading old childhood favorites, but the believe -a happened a couple weeks back. And I don't know, it just made me jealous seeing everyone else read middle grade. And there's been a few series I've been eyeing up for a really, really long time. So I think these are gonna be ones I get to really fast. One that everyone was talking about during believe -a was A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. So all I know about this is that it's like three sisters who have an ancient curse over them and it's a story of their kind of adventure together that they go on together. But this is one that literally every single person was reading for believe -a and they all gave it pretty, pretty high ratings. So I think it's one that I'm gonna really enjoy. And I just wanna get back into that magic of reading middle grade. You know, there's something so unique and so special about middle grade that I feel like I'm missing out on by not really reading it. So that's the first book. Next I grab a middle grade I've actually been eyeing up for quite a while, which is Pages and Co by Anna James. This is the first book in the series. And I think this is about a girl who like goes into books or, oh, her favorite book characters appear in the bookshop that she works at with her, not she works at, but you know, lives there. <laughs> you got an 11 year old like stacking the shelves. That would be like illegal. Oh my God, even just looking at it, it takes me back to being a kid. And I just want to feel like a kid again quite frankly. Growing up is fucking scary. <laughs> I've again heard so many people on booktube speak about this and again it's just one I've been eyeing up for ages. I've heard so many good things about it. There's so many times I've popped into Waterstones and gone maybe I should get it and so I finally did. And then the last middle grade I grabbed was one I haven't heard loads of people on booktube talk about. This is probably one of the oldest books on my want to read on Goodreads and it's The Clockwork Sparrow by Catherine Woodfine. So I... <laughs> about to expose myself. What have I fucking done? Okay, so... Back in the day, before I watched booktube, my, my choice of entertainment on, on YouTube, I loved productivity. YouTube channels. Is this weird? It's a bit weird. Like I watched people do study with me's and that it got me through my A levels. It was what I needed to get me through that time. There's a productivity YouTuber called Ruby Granger. Her vibe is very unique. Her aesthetic is very unique, but she spoke about this book a lot. And at the time I was like, okay, I have to read it. We've got all these ladies in there. Victor Victorian Bez. I think it's set at a department store called Sinclair's and just something about this. I feel like it's gonna give me Sherlock Holmes vibes. I love mysteries, as you know. Mysteries are kind of fast becoming my favorite genre, especially murder mysteries, but I don't believe a middle grade is gonna be a murder. <laughs> give me that grit, Catherine Woodfine. Enter a world of bonbons, hats, perfumes, and mysteries around every corner. The daring theft of the priceless clockwork sparrow tremble as the most dastardly criminals in London enact their wicked plans. Gasp as our bold heroines, Miss Taylor, Miss Sophie Taylor, and Miss Lillian Rose break codes, devour ice burns, and vow to bring the villains to justice. A splendid adventure awaits you. <laughs> I just love the sound of this. I love the vibes, and so it's one I really cannot wait to get to. All of these middle grades, I think I might do a week where I just read middle grades soon. I just feel like I need it in my life. Quickly before we get into YA, let's just talk about two graphic novels I've bought. The first is Bloom by Kevin Panetta, and I've heard a lot of good things about this. I think it's about a boy 
who is working in the family bakery and then another boy comes and starts to work there too and it's kind of just like their romance. <laughs> but what I love about this is that it's all blue. Sorry, that was a very obnoxious blue. I don't know who, the, who I think I am. I love when graphic novels have a colour scheme. Laura Dinky's Breaking Up With Me had a brilliant pink and grey colour scheme and this one, it just doesn't, I'm so, I'm so excited to read this. And, uh, uh, <laughs> and it looks so cute. Look at them kneading the bread. I love bread as well. <laughs> I'm a big bread fan. So uh, anything about bread gets me. <laughs> what a sad little life, Jane. Anyone else love bread? <laughs> And then the second graphic novel I got is The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. Again, this is one I've heard so many great things about on Booktube. And I, I think it's queer. By the way, apologies if you hear any cats snoring. They are sitting in a wardrobe, like curled up into one another, snoring really loudly. So apologies if you hear that. Okay, yeah. So I think we have a male-male romance in this. And there is also a queer disabled character, if I'm remembering rightly. But this... Oh my giddy aunt. Oh my god. Tell me that isn't the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. I had to get it. I had to get it. I had to get it. You can't blame me. Okay, so let's get into YA. There are some that I'm quickly gonna haul that I have read, but listen, if I spent money on these books, I'm gonna include them in a haul. I don't have a lot of money, so like. So first is Cup New Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I read these in my Reading New Releases video that I put out. And this is by Elizabeth Avedo, the queen, the icon, the living legend. It's told in verse and it is about two sisters who have the same father but they don't know each other exists. And the father often, I think he spends about four months of the year with the one living in the Dominican Republic. And then he spends the rest of his time living with the other girl who believes kind of like that she is his only family, if that makes sense. One day when he's on the flight to go visit his daughter in the Dominican Republic, the flight crashes and he dies. That leads the girls to discover that one another exists. It's so heart, heart wrenching. It is a really great study of character. It's a very character focused book. There's not a lot of plot. It's a beautifully written book. It is incredible. So this is one I would really recommend that you pick up. I'm so glad I read it like when it came out. It's a really fast read and so hard hitting and so beautifully written. It's a really, really great book. And then the other book I read in that new releases video was The Empire of Dreams by Ray Carson. So this is a new companion book to the Girl of Fire and Thorn series. And this is about a young girl who we meet in the last book in the original trilogy. And this is about her trying to get adopted by the queen and when that falls through, she becomes part of the Royal Guard. And it's about her being the first girl in the Royal Guard, about her figuring out who she wants to be, the kind of person she wants to be. I did a live show for this with some of my friends with Nicole, Simone and Ishi. And we discovered that the villain, kind of, the person who comes back at the end and has a really big part in the plot and is in this big end scene, sis, they died in the first book. I don't understand. I don't understand, bitch. I don't understand. I don't understand, bitch. <laughs> and this book just tries to pretend they never died, but they died. And we were all so confused in the live. So originally, I think I gave us like 3.5, maybe, but it's probably a 3 or maybe even a bit lower. Because how? How can you have that bigger plot point where this character died, was never seen again, was never heard of again? Big plot points happen because they had died, like people inherited certain lands, whatever. And then you're just back as if nothing has happened. I've emailed Ray Carson to try and get an answer, but this ain't giving us the information. For a book to be published, like you've spent a lot of time planning this, you never thought, at least I have to have an explanation for why you all thought she was dead. Maybe she just hopes it's been years and years since anyone read the book. They'll just accept that that's what happened. Well, I read the book like two months ago to prepare myself for this coming out. And you gave me a dead character as the villain? It's disgusting. It's disgusting. And then the last book that I've already read 
is The Never Tilting World by Rin Chapeco. I read this when my cats picked my TBR and I enjoyed this but I gave it three stars and this is about a world which has stopped turning and so half of it is permanently in light and so it's like a desert and the other half is permanently in darkness and so super icy and cold and each land is ruled by a goddess who has a daughter who is also a goddess who eventually become the goddess. This was for perspectives and two different storylines essentially and I've just discovered I don't like it when books have two different storylines I like us to have one story the only one that really it actually worked for me was Clap When You Land I didn't mind it in that one because we were so focused on the characters in this one so this is literally on how each of these girls are feeling and so it felt very connected it felt very conjoined because they were united by this same event whereas in this one it's it's plot heavy and so we're following two different heavy plots if that makes sense and it, I just don't like it I just don't think I like that in books and so I need to be careful in the future getting books that have that feature because I just don't think it's something for me I think Rin Chapeco is a great writer and I would love to read anything else by her I don't know if the Bone Witch has that same feature if not I'll probably will read it okay and then the YA that I haven't read yet I've got Ask the Passengers by A.S. King I'm slowly working my way through all of A.S. King's stuff I love her stuff I recently read Dig by her and that was a five star and so I was just kind of figuring out what books do I want to treat myself to and I knew I wanted to have another, another A.S. King I read two of her books, Pleasing Lord Vera Deeds and Reality Boy on audiobook and I just think actually that she is the kind of author I want to read physically. I don't know why. There's some authors I want to read audibly and some I want to read physically because often her stuff is very complex and has, can have hidden meanings and so I just want it to be something that I can read over. This is about a girl I think who talks to the passengers in the airplanes. Oh honey, I don't know what you're talking about. And with A.S. King's stuff, sometimes it blurs a line of like, is this actually happening? Is the character imagining it? Or is fantastical elements bleeding into real life? Which I really like. And then the last YA book that I got my hands on is Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. So I've heard so many brilliant things about their stuff. I don't know much about this plot. <laughs> All I know is that I've heard a lot of my favourite booktubers speak so highly of Anna Marie McLemore's work. And so I asked Twitter, like, where would be best to start with Anna Marie McLemore's books? And a lot of people said Wild Beauty. And so that's the one I'm starting with. <laughs> that's the one I've gotten first. I don't really know what this is about. All I know is that it's a beautiful cover. I'm loving magical realism at the moment. It's a genre I'm really falling in love with, much like murder mystery. They're kind of two of my favourite genres at the moment. I assume this is a quote from the book. That setting his hand on a girl's back and that... That this was a thing he'd learned that setting his girl. Okay, let's just try it again! You bunch of bastards! This was a thing he'd learned that setting his hand on a girl's back and that girl letting his hand stay led to fairy rings and ponds full of stars. Even in its first faint traces, love could alter a landscape. It wrote unimagined stories and made the most beautiful forbidden places. Love grew such strange things. Tell me that does not, oh, that's beautiful. Well, okay, I cannot wait to get into this. Okay, so now we're gonna get into all my adult stuff that I've bought. This is the majority of the haul, actually. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 10 of them are adult. Okay, let's just get the embarrassing one out of the way. So like, don't judge me. You need to be locked in prison for a very long time. You need the internet taken away from you. You are a danger. To society. But uh, I got someone to send me the book of the month copy of The Guest List by Lucy Foley a couple months ago. <laughs> so you all know that The Guest List, probably, maybe, unless you're new here, but The Guest List by Lucy Foley is one of my favourite books of this year so far. It is a murder mystery set on this remote island between this couple. The bride is the head of this kind of like elite magazine and the groom is a action TV star, kind of like, what's his name, Bear Grylls? I think he's kind of like Bear Grylls equivalent, but like prettier, a bit of a pretty boy. We find out on the first page, the first chapter, that someone has been killed. And we don't know for the majority of the book who it is. We jump around in time between before the wedding, during the wedding and after the wedding. It's told through multiple perspectives, which I really enjoyed with this one. It's told through the eyes of the bride, the plus one, the best man, the wedding planner and the bridesmaid. And everyone has secrets. The way that they are revealed slowly is wonderful. And the way that they're revealed also makes you doubt different people at different times. Like at certain points you trust 
some people and not others and you're like oh no I then I trust this person and not another person oh one of my favorite books and then when I saw that it was a book of the month pick a couple months ago I was just like does anyone want to send it to me and someone that I meet just on Twitter said yeah I got a spare credit come on then let's do it and so I now have two copies of it I don't actually have my other copy with me I've lent it out I'm gonna do a reread I think soon with this copy I've never done this before where I have two copies of a book that I loved but I just feel like this one deserved it because it's so good and it's really ignited a love for me of murder mysteries. Let's talk about the thrillers that I have. First is The Chalkman by CJ Tudor. I just received this yesterday from Molly who is the loveliest person in the world. She has a YouTube channel, a booktube channel, which I will link down below, which you should definitely go check out. She is incredibly kind and lovely and wonderful. And when she got me this, I just could not believe it. I was so shocked. This is one that had been on my wish list for a long time. It had been my radar for a long time. I remember, I think I first heard people talking about it when I was in Florida. I have a vivid memory of being in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... I think I was watching Kayla's vlog or someone talking about this. I was like, oh, that sounds amazing. I need to get that. And that was over a year ago. So it's been on my radar for a long time. I think there's some kind of game going on to do with the chalk men, but then someone is killed. And then we kind of are going backwards and forwards in time, I believe, trying to figure out what happened. I think there's kind of like a group of kids who know the truth or know parts of the truth. And the next one that I got was The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware is fast becoming one of my favorite authors. I've given both of her books I've read so far five stars. I've read The Turn of the Key and the book that is coming out in, I think it's October or November. It may be October in the US and November in the UK. I could be wrong, but one by one, I read an arc of that and adored it. Five stars. It has, it's a closed circle murder mystery, which is my favorite thing. This isn't, but this is another one of her books, The Death of Mrs. Westaway. I'm just wanting to make my way through all of her books. <laughs> No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. So this is about a girl who learns that she's received a big amount of money from her grandparents. Right? So she's in the money, honey. <laughs> honey! <laughs> honey! Honey! But she, her grandparents died. And she's like, sis, this woman ate my grandparent, but I need the money. So I'm gonna come and play along. I think shit starts going wrong, essentially. It's a thriller, it's a Ruth Ware thriller. What more do we expect? So the girl is like, I'm gonna get some dollar. And then stuff starts going wrong. The next book I got is The Fair Fight by Anna Freeman. So I think it was Riley I heard, Riley Marie I heard talk about this quite a while ago. And I think it's about girls fighting in, like boxing in underground Bristol, I think, in kind of like Victorian era. I love Victorian era. I don't know why I love reading books about Victorian England so much. I don't tend to read loads of historical fiction, but when I do, I really enjoy it. So I'm excited to get into this one. I've spoken a bit about buying this book already, but I also bought Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Women. I bought this immediately after seeing the film. I'm, I ain't original. <laughs> I went to see the film and I loved it. I've heard mixed things. Some people say, oh, the book is just as good as the film. And then others say, no, the film is way better than the book. The book ain't that good. So I'm a bit nervous about it. I'm sure you know the story of Little Women. I don't need to tell you what this is about. There's about four sisters. It's about them growing up. It's about them figuring out who they are, what kind of people they want to be. And I really love the story behind this of like, Louisa May Alcott rebelling against her publishers and stuff like that. I, I like seeing how the real Louisa May Alcott and Joe blend together in this. And then the rest of the books are kind of fantasy, the rest of the adult books I've got. The first is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I have heard so many wonderful things about this book. I don't want, I don't, I can't articulate the plot, do you? <laughs> are you dumb? Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Green are you room. dumb? Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Are you dumb? <laughs> Are you dumb? Are you dumb? I have just been seeing so many people the past few months reading this and just loving it. Everyone whose opinion I trust have been giving it four and five stars. I have heard that it's a little bit complex, like it's quite a complex high fantasy book, but sometimes I'm craving that. And Oh, I just stumbled across a sex scene. I saw the word lube and I was like, <laughs> ah! Being a bit saucy. Oh. Oof. <laughs> I'm 
the next book I got is Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackwith. So this is about how any books left unfinished are like filed away in this library. And there is a librarian whose job it is to kind of keep the protagonist of, I think, of the book from ever meeting their author. But then one of the heroes escapes. And so it's like a great chase to try and get the the hero back in their book I think before they meet their author because I think bad things happen if the two collide. This is another book which a lot of people have been speaking about recently and it just sounds like my kind of thing. It's blurred by Shauna Maguire who's one of my favourite authors so it can only mean good things. It can only mean good things. So very excited, very very excited to get this one. This is one which I think I'll be picking up very soon. And then the lovely Nicole who I speak about all the time, my favourite person in the world. She sent me, is it The Lovely War? I always thought it was The Lovely War. Is it just Lovely War? She sent me Lovely War or The Lovely War by Julie Berry. So this is about Aphrodite telling the story of Second World War, I think, through two love stories. So I'm a bit nervous about the whole split time thing. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> I have heard a few people say recently it does have a racist slur in it. And so I am a bit wary to go into this book because of that reason. So that's just something I wanna be upfront about now to tell you about that um because i don't think i should just pretend oh that doesn't exist it's one i've heard people like riley speak about a lot heather from aphrodite reads has spoken about this loads i think it's like one of her favorite books ever and so it's just been one that's been on my radar for a long time and i love the cover i they aren't isn't this pink like my vibes i love it i love it so much and then a purchase i feel very guilty for to this day i f i feel awful for this purchase but I brought the Illumicrate versions of <laughs> Nevernight and God's Grave. So I placed the order for these, like, I think probably in December or November last year. They only just came through a couple weeks ago. Do I regret it? Yes. Because these were, like, £50. <laughs> But it's past Megan's mistake. I can't be angry at myself for it now. We live and we learn, we move on, we become better people. And I can't even really tell you what the book is about. This is so humiliating! I know it's about a girl called Mia who I think trains to become like an assassin, maybe. I mean, it's signed. At least I paid for that, eh? I do love the covers though. I love the black sprayed edges. I love the vibes of the covers. And I love the Illuminate Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. And so they are authors I'm very excited to get to. However, I keep looking at these and going, Megan, you could have bought so many other books. I'm very excited for the footnotes, like in the books where it explains part of the world building. I love the idea of footnotes. That flavor. I love the idea of footnotes. I know some people hate them when they read the book. I don't think that's gonna be me. I think I'm gonna love them. But yeah, I bought these and I'm sorry. <laughs> And then lastly, I also picked up two non-fiction books, the first of which is Not That Bad by Roxane Gay. So I recently read Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay, which is hiding away somewhere here now. Not like you can see it. But this is about rape culture and it is edited by Roxane Gay. It has tons of essays from so many different women. Roxane Gay's writing and her um, collections of, of essays and stuff is something that I really want to read. All of it. But I get the sense this is going to be a very hard read, but a very necessary read. In Bad Feminist, she spoke really impactfully about the sexual assault that she suffered when she was younger. Stuff like this is something that we should all be reading. And the last book of this book haul is The Five by Hallie Rubenholt. So this is about the five women that Jack the Ripper killed. And it takes you through their lives. It takes you through their lives and gives their lives voices and I've always been very interested in history as a kid I loved Victorian history and that's something that obviously has stuck with me a little bit like I thought I was it because I knew Victorian history like I was the class expert you know I used to be one of those people okay this is gonna sound so dumb but like if you stay to the end of this video you do you, you don't care um <laughs> Okay, comment a stack of books if you heard this story so I know how many people have embarrassed myself to. But I, so you like, you had like themed days when you were a kid, right? And one thing they did at my school when you went into year five, so like you were nine or 10. And so we had someone come to our school and pretend to be like a Victorian teacher, like a really harsh Victorian teacher. And he was really mean to us. And I was like, 
that about to be my job. <laughs> so for years I wanted to be someone who went round schools and pretended to be a Victorian teacher. <laughs> it was so weird. You are so corny. I love books that tell the story of forgotten women throughout history. And this is definitely one of those. And I just can't wait to get to it. I think these women are people who need their stories told, people who need their voices heard. They're brutally murdered by this man and yet the one that everyone remembers is him. And it's just so unjust. I think trying to elevate the voices of these women who have come before us and who history has eradicated and erased is so important and so I cannot wait to get to this one. So there we have it, that is all of the books I've recently bought. Let me know if there's any here that you have loved. Let me know which your favourite is. Let me know if you've hated any of them as well because <laughs> I like to know what I'm getting myself in for. But yeah, let me know especially if you've loved any of them. Thank you so much for watching as always. I hope you're having a good time and I will see you very, very soon. Bye!